Hi everyone, my name is Naresh Agarwal. I'm an associate professor at the School of Library and Information Science at Simmons University in Boston, USA. Uh, it is my great privilege today to be invited here uh, at this uh, first international conference on information and knowledge management uh, to speak on, as a featured speaker. And I'd like to talk uh, about knowledge management because that's the primary theme of the conference. And uh, that has been my research area for the last um, 10 years or so. And I've also been teaching uh, knowledge management uh, every year for the past few years. Now, one of the questions that came about um, in my early classes in knowledge management was that uh, one of the students asked me saying that uh, I've taken an entire semester of knowledge management and we've locked, learned about various things to do with knowledge management uh, from the various phases of the, of the KM cycle uh, and uh, and the role of uh, different enablers like technology and culture and so on but I still do not know how to implement knowledge management and as I went about looking for papers in this area I found that uh, there were not very many uh, papers um, on, on knowledge strategy and uh, the, the a lot of the papers talked about the idea that uh, there is no silver bullet to implementing knowledge management and that is when uh, uh, we had a, a, a visiting uh, scholar, a visiting professor in my university, Professor uh, Lela Maruf uh, from uh, Kuwait University. And Lela and I decided to collaborate on a paper to talk about, uh, to give a systematic uh, template on how we can go about implementing knowledge management. And I'd like to share uh, some of the key findings from that paper here today in this talk because I think it's a um, it's a very practical paper and which can be really useful in how to go about implementing and initiating knowledge management, uh, especially in colleges and universities. So the, so the talk today is from converting knowledge management from merely an idea or something that's nice to do into reality and how we can go about doing that in a in a step uh, step by step uh, phased manner. So this was uh, the paper that Lela and I wrote. Uh, it is initiating knowledge management in colleges and universities, and it was published in uh, and the International Journal of Knowledge Content Development and Technology. So it's a long paper, and uh, what I'd I'd be highlighting here is uh, some of the key findings uh, from the paper. But for more details, you can refer to the paper itself. So the, I also want to give a brief overview of my research area, the space that I operate in, and. Uh, most of the time, uh, my my research interest revolves around uh, the actor or the user. This actor or the, or the, or the user could be um, a knowledge worker in any organization, could be a working person, a data analyst, uh, a student, a conference attendee uh, in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, it could also be a child uh, or any, any other person. It could be a student. And uh, Brenda Derwin, um, uh, who, who is a famous uh, professor in, in communications and in information science uh, and who came up with the sense-making methodology. She defines this actor or the user or the person as a body, mind, uh, heart and spirit moving through time and space. And uh, she says that uh, this person has a past history, a present reality and future dreams or ambitions. So it could be any other, any person like, like you or me uh, who is this actor or person. And uh, so, so this person has a need for information and when you have a need for information you start uh, this process of uh, looking for information or information seeking and you might go about asking your friends or colleagues uh, at your workplace uh, or a reference librarian in the library or you could go to the library for books or you might go about uh, looking for information from computer-based sources uh, that you might access uh, through your smartphones or tablets or a laptop or a desktop computer and uh, Sometimes you find information serendipitously when, you, when we are not really looking for it. And as we get this information, we try to make sense of this. Some of our questions get answered and, and we have uh, further questions and we continue the search. And sometimes uh, when there's unpleasant information, we might uh, want to avoid uh, the, the information uh, that is presented to us. Uh, and one, one of my current research areas is looking at uh, how people uh, respond to, to non-response. That is when people do not uh, answer your, your text messages or calls on on Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or any other uh, so we, means of uh, instant messaging or communication. So, so these these are some of the uh, my research areas uh, 
the arts research spaces over the last uh, few years and this entire spectrum um, can be with, seen within this whole uh, gamut uh, whole field called uh, called called information behavior which which encompasses uh, all these various forms like seeking and serendipitous finding collaborative information behavior in information avoidance and so on and similar to information behavior uh, but slightly different uh, is this field of knowledge management which is looking at uh, at things of phenomena not from an individual's point of view but from an organization's point of view so here often the unit of, unit of analysis is uh, um, some project in, in, in a team in an, in an organization uh, and often you have uh, some some problem that you're trying to solve or some opportunity that you identify and based on that opportunity now you're trying to go about uh, implementing a solution uh, a solution of change management uh, uh, within a, a given setting and through that change, uh, you want to the, hopefully make lives easier for the people in that organization uh, and also make it more efficient and more productive. So, so, th so that is uh, the field of knowledge management. Often you can think of it as uh, when you go to your, work, your, your workspace uh, or your workplace and you enter the, uh, your university or a library or any other organization, let's say at 9 a.m. and walk out at 5 p.m., then after you leave, uh, some of the knowledge sort of works, works out with you and how can you really manage that knowledge that resides in people's heads uh, with, which is often called tacit knowledge and also how, how can you manage all the information and knowledge that resides in written forms and in books and in documents and in manuals and uh, bring all this together in a way when it is usable in the right place at the, and at the right time so all of that is concerned with uh, all of these are concerns of the field of knowledge management which has been a field since around um, the the early 90s or so and it has been going strong uh, with a lot of uh, success stories but about some failures failed stories as well and then there is a context the context is uh, the environment uh, that gives rise to a need for information but context is also generated automatically at the place of interaction between um, the information and the, and the user so uh, I actually wrote a book on uh, on this topic as to what do we really mean by by context and uh, this is a book that came out uh, last year and it's published by Morgan and, and Claypool and also on Amazon so this is a link uh, for the book and this goes into the details the details of uh, what is context so the going further into this uh, uh, the topic that we're talking about as to what is knowledge management uh, now there have been various definitions of knowledge management and it is an interdisciplinary field and uh, Larry Prusak defines it as an attempt to rec recognize what is essentially a human asset buried in the minds of individuals uh, and to leverage it into an organizational asset that can be accessed and used by, by a broader set of individuals on whose decisions the organization depends. So basically taking something from one person's head and making it part of the organization that is the kind of uh, it seems sounds like a difficult task but that's the kind of thing that uh, knowledge management attempts to do and uh, uh, it's thinking very simply I think we can think of knowledge management as a way of uh, not being lonely and alone in organizations oftentimes you feel lonely or alone if uh, your opinion is not valued and uh, and what is uh, and you feel that there is a need to safeguard your the knowledge that you have but when you create a culture where knowledge sharing happens very naturally and very openly and people don't really feel the need to safeguard uh, what they have but and they and it's also very ex very all right and acceptable to say that i do not know when you do not know something that is an that is an environment in which uh, knowledge management really thrives so the, another definition is by Hibbert who says that km is a process km and knowledge management are the, are the same terms i use them intermittently so KM is a process of capturing an organization's collective expertise wherever it resides in databases on paper in people's heads and then distributing it uh, to wherever it can help produce the biggest uh, payoff so there are two primary types of knowledge tacit and explicit tacit is the one that um, resides in our heads the knowledge of uh, knowing how to do something rather than being able to tell someone about it like uh, knowledge of how to drive how to cook and uh, how to swim so it's often uh, compared with an iceberg where we where there's a lot more buried buried within us than what we bring to the surface in terms of the knowledge that we share with people or that we're able to document and that sort of knowledge is called either codified knowledge or explicit knowledge uh, there is another uh, 
th another uh, term called the KM cycle or the knowledge management cycle and that often talks about how the various forms in which uh, knowledge moves about within organization and that includes phases like uh, knowledge capture and creation, um, knowledge sharing and transfer, knowledge application and use, also divesting and giving up of knowledge when you don't no longer need it. So the problem that I'm really looking at in this paper is uh, the, uh, the problem of uh, a lack of knowledge management in colleges and universities. And uh, w while the term uh, is familiar to a lot of people, there's often a gap between the term and on the strategy of how to go about implementing uh, KM, especially in uh, university settings. So the, there can be the various kinds of issues uh, in universities, like how to increase uh, research productivity, how to increase student retention, and how to do more, how to attract more students, uh, and how to have a greater brand name, how to incre increase your, pre your prestige, how to increase your quality of learning, um, how to how to manage uh, with the depleting budgets or funds, various kinds of issues that universities face. And uh, even though knowledge management has been implemented largely in for-profit organizations and companies and uh, and some other field areas as well, uh, it is it is relatively new in colleges and universities, and there really has not been um, an easy strategy for for people to re really know how to go about implementing KM. So these are my research questions. Uh, how can colleges and universities successfully implement KM? And what are the steps to follow and in uh, what sequence? So these are the things, uh, the questions that Leila and I tried to answer in our 2014 uh, paper. Um, but then in this talk today, uh, I'm hoping that we can also get some insights into how can these steps be applied in the Bangladesh context and for sustainable development, which is the theme of this uh, this conference here. So, so that that is something that you can keep in mind as you as you listen to these uh, steps. So, Odell and Grayson, uh, these researchers, uh, they came up with uh, this this framework, and they said that to implement uh, key knowledge management, there can be uh, four simple steps uh, or phases. The first phase of the planning. Uh, the second stage, stage phase of designing, the third phase of uh, implementing, and then finally scaling up. So, uh, so this sort of moves about uh, in a cycle. But then at the center of it is this idea called uh, value proposition. So value proposition is the is the why question. Why would you even bother with knowledge management? Why, when I go and tell someone about that I want to implement knowledge management in the organization, they would say like, why? I don't need it. But then if you go and tell them that I can uh, how can I make your life easier than what it is? And they, then they might listen. Uh, so this value proposition is really trying to answer or address organizational goals or the goals of the college and university in our case. And then think about how we can use this to implement knowledge management. So here um, you have um, some, you have an enabling environment. And this enabling environment uh, really talks about uh, what are the things that are necessary in order to make sure that knowledge management uh, is successfully implemented. So you need a few things to be in place for knowledge management to thrive. Now, I think the, the first and foremost and the most important uh, aspect which has been widely discussed in the literature is the idea of culture, that you need to, need to have a culture where knowledge sharing and, and knowledge management is uh, is sort of looked at favorably and, and people feel uh, connected to each other. There is a collegial environment. and. Uh, and it's sort of a chicken and egg problem as to whether culture enables knowledge management or whether knowledge management implementation implement enables a knowledge sharing culture. So both of these uh, sort of uh, have a cyclical relationship and help each other. You also need to have a good uh, infrastructure for knowledge management. Uh, for instance, even the design of buildings, or whether you have hallways or whether you have common meeting areas and the way people see each other on a daily basis or do they have uh, directly walk into the offices, those those kinds of community spaces will determine uh, and the, the degree to which knowledge management can thrive. And uh, technology as well, technology is, is not uh, the end part, but it is an important part, enabler for knowledge management. One of the mistakes which people, people make is thinking that uh, technology is equivalent to knowledge management, and that's not. Knowledge management is much more than technology, it's primarily a system of culture. The culture plays an important role in a system of me mechanisms, processes need to be in place, uh, and people also need to be uh, need to believe in this culture of sharing. And technology can then help once once those pieces are in place. But, but in the absence of all those, just merely putting in a technology portal or a solution will, will not really ensure uh, uh, the success of knowledge management, and that is 
that in fact has been a reason why knowledge management has failed in, in a number of cases. And then you also need to have appropriate measures to measure the success of uh, knowledge management. So the, I would like, now like to describe um, a few steps uh, and these steps are meant to be iterative rather than uh, sequential. So in the first phase uh, of the plan phase, uh, in this phase all we are we're trying to do is to try to put together a, a knowledge management uh, planning team. So the first step is, is really trying to, uh, to, f to get to find a champion from the top administration uh, um, to form a, a knowledge management planning team. So in the absence of support from, from the top administration, which is uh, in the university's case, it could be the chancellor or the, the, um, the, or the president or the provost, and uh, you need to have uh, support from the administration. And the idea of a knowledge management could come from the from top down or could could come from the bottom up, and then you could get, then gather the support of the, of the top management. And uh, in this first phase, you need to have, uh, once you find a champion, uh, then you need to have a consultation to form a team for for, for, for a game implementation, which you which need to have a technology people and other uh, people for, for strategy, important people in different departments, and uh, also people who are enthusiastic about knowledge management and try to get, get some of these key stakeholders together and try to get this, uh, the outcome of this process is having a buy-in for KM and you need to, uh, some sort of promise for support and resources uh, and what is what is uh, what happens at the end of this phase is uh, a planning team for knowledge management and then um, the second step of uh, KM is uh, an identification of um, goals and priorities now you really need to decide uh, you cannot solve like all the problems at one go so in the first phase when you're trying to implement knowledge management you have to decide what is their primary organizational priority um, and that organizational priority then becomes the priority for knowledge management which could be let's say to increase student retention and make sure that students who in enroll in the university do not drop out or to increase the the faculty research product productivity that could be a goal for knowledge management so once you have this priority uh, it is typically di difficult for people to um, to come up with this priority. So you would need a three to four retreats, maybe half to your one day retreats involving different stakeholders of the university to identify what are these priorities. So uh, typically the, there is some sort of a, of a crisis uh, that happens when, when there's a funding cut or some reorganization taking place or some change in external environment, which then makes it forces people to then think about ways to change. Or there is some, uh, some opportunity that, that happens again so these are the areas, um, the, these are the times which can, might give rise to uh, some sort of a, a crisis or an opportunity to implement knowledge management. And then you need to align uh, your, uh, uh, you need to align your uh, KM goals with organizational goals or the department goals. And then you also identify the critical knowledge that you're trying to manage at this stage. So the outcome of this process is an identification of uh, the need for knowledge management, uh, priority areas, uh, critical knowledge, you also need to choose a pilot site, which department or, or school within the, the university that will be implementing knowledge management because you cannot do it everywhere. So you have to start small and then scale up. And then uh, you need to have a design team by the end of this, including uh, the, the technology team. So these are uh, some of the things that you uh, sort of uh, address in this stage. And then in the second phase, which is the design phase, you want to form a KM design team now so the, in the in this uh, step, you have to determine your current state in the priority areas uh, identified. So the determination of the current state means that uh, how ready are you uh, to implement knowledge management? So doing a readiness assessment of your uh, of your college uh, or university. So Lela and I we actually worked on this uh, step three, and we uh, did we designed uh, a survey uh, to be carried out to do to identify the individual factors affecting knowledge management to see if faculty members are ready for knowledge management or not. So there could be institutional factors and individual factors. So in this particular um, paper, we designed uh, a survey there and to just to look at the, the individual factors. So I can show you the, um, that paper uh, here briefly. So here, um, So, the, so this is uh, uh, our faculty members ready individual factors affecting knowledge management readiness 
and here as we go down now at, at the, the at the bottom of this paper there is uh, an appendix and that appendix has uh, the survey that we designed uh, yeah so so these are the factors over here so we were looking at uh, at trust as important uh, construct for knowledge management readiness i believe coll colleagues in, colleagues in my college and university are knowledgeable and competent in the area knowledge self efficacy i'm confident in, in my ability to provide knowledge that others in my college consider valuable a uh, perceived degree of collegiality that we have respect towards each other we support each other um, we are open to change and reciprocity so when i provide an answer to a colleague's question i believe somebody will provide an answer to a question that i might have and all of these factors um, you know, can can then uh, influence whether you are individually ready to participate in the KM initiative in your organization and whether you perceive that your, your organization or your university is ready to adopt KM. So the, so these are some of the, the, so this was this paper and the other paper is, uh, is, is the 10 step paper is this one, initiating knowledge management in colleges and universities. So let's uh, continue with this. So once you determine um, your current your current state, and this part will really take a long time to, because you need to conduct surveys and um, case studies or, or interviews to do this. Um, the fourth step is then to determine the approach to align with your culture. So so you need to know what sort of a culture you have in your organization, and uh, once you once you know that culture, that, uh, then you need to align uh, your, your approach to that culture and the capability to enable effective flow of knowledge in the organization. So here you could have. Um, various kinds of human interaction you could have an organizational culture where there is very low human interaction and or there's a very high degree of, degree of human interaction so if there's a lot of uh, human interaction taking place that is a, a ripe environment for the transfer of tacit knowledge from one person's head to another person's head so transfer of best practices communities of practice all these will thrive but as you have a lower level of interaction where people mostly keep to themselves and do not share or talk much then having um, a portal or a self-service things where you can simply go and look for resources shared by other people or, or a technology solution that might work more in, in that sort of a case. And um, so here I've proposed, uh, Lela and I, we proposed this, uh, this table where you have like a, a continuum of uh, anti-sharing versus a pro-sharing culture and the focus on um, the approach that you can take for knowledge management is uh, for the anti-sharing more of self-service case or, or more or less lessons learned and as you go on, go to pro-sharing there you have communities of practice and transfer of best practices for in an anti-sharing culture the focus is more on on explicit knowledge for a pro-sharing culture the focus is more on sharing of uh, of tacit knowledge and the anti-sharing culture here this is primarily centered on technology in a pro-sharing culture it's the focus is on people though, though they are supported by technology and then there are the when you map, what the kind of tools that you need in the first in the self-service case is mostly technology-based tools in the anti-sharing culture. In a pro-sharing culture, you need both uh, technology and non-technology-based tools and mechanisms to help in this process. And in step five, we need to develop um, measures of success uh, because you cannot use external measures. You have to come up with your own measures to determine whether knowledge management has succeeded or not, because only then you once the measures are yours. Uh, then you'll, there'll be a greater buy-in into the whole process. And then step six is uh, creating an action plan and getting getting the faculty or admin buy-in and you need uh, the budget and, and resources uh, at this stage. And now that you have done all this uh, uh, design work, uh, you need to uh, go on to the implementation uh, phase and then form a KM implementation team. So the, in, in, you launch a pilot and provide support at this stage. Uh, provide the support in pilot site and then uh, look for early results and look for measures of success at this stage because uh, measures of success can be uh, can boost enthusiasm to, to carry on further with the work and in step 8 you capture the success stories and publicize uh, early results and you do interviews uh, surveys uh, newsletters talks presentation and so, and so on at this stage and once you have a success in one department of the university then you can scale it up to other departments you can at this stage you can form a university-wide uh, knowledge management team and then come up with a phased uh, cycle for implementing knowledge management in various uh, units of the of the of the university so use the knowledge gain to realign strategy with university objectives so at this stage again you might want to go back to your uh, 
previous cycle uh, and, and see if everything works or you need to realign if your value proposition has changed by now because it might be one or two years but by the time you get to this stage and then you need to the, the re you rethink your strategy at this stage and once uh, if the process is working well or based on the changes you've made you can scale up your success to other units of the university and then revise and repeat uh, what you've done so that so that in in a sense is sort of a, a brief uh, explanation of the 10 steps and for the more details you can read the paper and uh, this is a, a, a summation of all these various stages so here you have uh, the various steps listed here these are the four phases um, you have the steps uh, what are the mechanisms that you have in each of these uh, these steps and what is the outcome of uh, each step um, that you need to have so this is the the framework for initiating km in a college or university that Leila and i proposed so you do have uh, uh, the value proposition and then you ha do have these enabling conditions but then in each of those phases you have these steps uh, which are identified and this is done by extending uh, Odell and Grayson's uh, framework. So one of the things to think about is uh, how could the 10 steps that I've just outlined to you be applied in the Bangladesh context uh, and for sustainable development. So, so what are the things um, you need to look at your own university, your own priorities and goals, and to, and to see what would what would work. Uh, uh, what kind of a culture do you have? Do you, is it more of an anti-sharing culture or a, or a pro-sharing culture? For, so, for instance, in East West University or in other universities in Bangladesh, like the University of Dhaka. Uh, so you can uh, you can think of uh, what which cultures are there, what culture is there, and what tools do you need to to help support you in the best possible manner to implement uh, knowledge management. So here you have, um, I have listed a few papers. Um, this was the paper that I described over here. Uh, this was the, uh, the link to and the picture of the book. And uh, there is another paper that, uh, that uh, Anwar, uh, the, the, he is a professor in the, the University of Dhaka. So Anwar and I, uh, we have been collaborating for a few years. And one of the papers we wrote was on, on implementing knowledge management uh, in academic libraries. And, and how to map tools and technologies to various phases of the KM cycle. So this is a very practical paper as well because it looks at, at various gamuts of both technology and non-technology tools. And uh, once you're ready to implement knowledge management, then the, using looking at these tools can really help you determine what tools are best suited for you to implement knowledge management when, when it comes to choosing technologies and also other mechanisms for knowledge management. So these would be useful papers for you to, in this process of uh, of initiating knowledge management both in university settings and also in um, various kinds of libraries. So here there is uh, more information on me. The, uh, this is my website. Uh, there's another website on a project that I started called Project Wonders World so you can check this out. If you'd like to tweet this is my Twitter handle and uh, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or comments. I'd look forward to those and uh, thank you so much um, for, for taking the time to listen to me.